Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Josh Discoding. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at wave-based spawning. So we're going to spawn a number of enemies, stop spawning until those enemies have been killed, and then continue spawning. So, if you've been following along with the tutorial, you'll have an enemy spawning that looks like this. Essentially, the way we set this up is that you just put in one enemy spawner, and then this one enemy spawner will handle spawning enemies throughout multiple points. So you only ever need one enemy spawner. So we can sort of consider this an enemy spawner manager. So in here, we're going to be storing variables like the amount of enemies spawned, the amount of enemies killed, and whether or not we should be starting a new wave. You can sort of consider this our enemy spawner slash wave manager at this point. So what we'll do is create a new variable and we'll call it amount of enemies to spawn. And we'll compile and you'll see we now have a default value here in the details panel, amount of enemies to spawn. And this will be the amount of enemies you want to spawn in a wave. So we'll say, I'm just gonna put one just to keep it quick for the tutorial. But of course you can put however many you want here. This will be the amount of enemies you spawn on wave one. So if you want 10 enemies, just put in 10. But again, just to keep showing it off quick, I'll put in one. Then we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call it amount of enemies spawned. So you have amount of enemies to spawn and amount of enemies spawned. The amount of enemies spawned, we're going to leave at zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag it out and we're going to do a increment int. You can find that node by just typing plus plus. Incrementing essentially just says it's this value, whatever the current value is, plus one. And we're going to drag all three of our spawn AI nodes into this increment. What we'll do now is drag out our amount of enemies to spawn. And we'll say if this new value is greater than or equal to amount of enemies to spawn branch. If that's true, we want to stop spawning enemies. So what we can do is actually come back down here to begin play where we have this set timer by events. In this return value, which is a timer handle structure, which is Unreal Engine's way of tracking uh, timers and handling timers, we'll promote that to a variable. So right click and select promote to variable. And we'll just rename this variable enemy spawn timer handle. Just like so. Now, if we come back over here to where we're checking the amount of enemies spawned and killed, or sorry, the amount of enemies spawned compared to the amount of enemies we want spawned in a wave, we can just call Clear and invalidate timer, which will essentially stop the timer and make sure it never fires again. So again, if the amount of enemies spawned is greater than or equal to the amount of enemies to spawn, then we're going to stop that timer. So now, for example, if I run this, I said we should only spawn one enemy. So after five seconds, we will spawn one enemy, and you will see that we never spawn an enemy again. As you can see, it is staying at one. Now I'm going to go ahead and increase this number from five to two, just speed up showing it off. Of course, you can keep that time whenever. So once we spawn a certain amount of enemies, we now stop, which is cool. Um, that's the first part of wave, stopping the spawn. The next part, is starting to spawn them again. Now there's a few ways you can handle this. You can either say after X amount of seconds, start spawning them again, or say after all of them have been killed, start it again. Or you can just say if one of them's been killed, start it again. There's a lot of ways you might want to start a wave again. We are going to go off of the amount, basically, we want every enemy to be killed from the previous wave before we start a new wave. So how can we do that? 
Well, we're actually going to have to come to our basic enemy here. And we are going to say event begin play. We are going to get actor of class. And it is going to be of class bp underscore enemy spawner. Now remember, you will only ever have one of these enemy spawners, so this get actor will always return the correct enemy spawner. So what can we do now? Well, we now have access to all of the enemy spawners variables inside this basic enemy. What we'll want to do though is promote this to a variable. You're going to Promote this return value to a variable. Again, you right click to this return value and just click promote variable. And we'll rename it enemy spawner. So, I currently have no way of killing the enemy in this game. Uh, I haven't set up any kills. If you have a way of killing an enemy, that's great. What I'm going to do, just to demonstrate killing the enemy, will just be to throw it in a vent tick. I highly recommend you don't do this and you create your own. You know, when a zombie reaches zero health, you kill it. But I'll just say, after one second, once that's completed, we will get our enemy spawner. And we want to say that an enemy has been killed. So back in our enemy spawner, we will add a variable, another integer, and it will be amount of enemies killed. So again, you created a new variable type integer called amount of enemies killed. So what we can do in this enemy spawner is say amount of enemies killed, that amount of enemies killed. So from the enemy spawner, you drag out and search to get amount of enemies killed. And we are just going to, sorry, you don't even have to set it. We'll just increment it. We will get amount of enemies killed. And we'll say plus plus, which again, increases it by one. And then we'll just go ahead and destroy this enemy. Again, you don't have to do this if you already have your own way of killing an enemy set up. So we aren't actually using a parent class in this tutorial because inheritance will be its own tutorial in the future. So you actually need to do this for all of your enemies. So you can just copy that whole event tick and paste it into the enemies. You'll see here this enemy spawner variable doesn't exist. Um, and that's because I forgot to copy the in play. So you have to paste both the begin play and event tick in here. And you can see this set is grayed out. That's because we haven't created the variable on this enemy. So you can right click and create a variable. Now you compile, it'll work. Again, just copy both the begin play and event tick and drag it into our enemy, other enemy and paste. And again, promote to variable. So this is not the ideal way of doing it. The ideal way of doing it is to have a parent class, but again, I'll go over inheritance in it. So now whenever one of our enemies dies, it increases the amount of enemies killed. Very straightforward. So what can we do now? Well. There's a few ways we can check if the amount of enemies killed is enough to be the amount of enemies spawned. The way I'm going to do this is add a custom event. Now I'll actually call this check amount of enemies killed. So again, right click, create custom event. and then rename it. So now when each of our enemies, right after we do this increment, or however you kill your enemy, 
from the enemy spawner, we're going to call check amount of enemies killed. And once again, we're going to have to do this for all three of them. Check amount of enemies killed. And for our final one, we will do check number amount of enemies killed. Just like so. Now, whenever an enemy dies, it is going to call this event. So, what can we do in this event? Well, we can get the amount of enemies killed, and we can get the amount of enemies to spawn. And we'll say if the amount of enemies killed is greater than or equal to the amount of enemies to spawn, that means we've killed every zombie in the wave. So if true, first we're going to set our enemy spawned back to zero because no enemies have spawned in this new wave. Then we'll say amount of enemies killed. Well, we want to set that back to zero as well. And we want to set the amount of enemies to spawn. So I'm just going to say the amount of enemies to spawn will be get amount of enemies to spawn plus one. But of course, you can do whatever you want here. Like you could do amount of enemies to spawn is wave times three, wave times five, whatever it might be. I'm just going to keep it simple. One. And again, um, best practice if you're more advanced would be to put this in its own function. But again, we'll go over that in another tutorial. We're just going to keep it simple for now. Now, we now know if we spawn enough enemies, we now know if we've killed enough enemies. But remember, we stopped our timer over here. So we need to start the timer again. Now, how do we do that? Well, we are going to grab this timer handle and set. Uh, or sorry, we're sorry, apologies. We're going to right click on nowhere and we're going to. Um, set timer by event. Actually, let's do this a bit differently. Um, you come back here where we're clearing and invalidating this timer handle. What we're going to do instead is we're just going to pause timer by handle. So again, after this chain, after we spawn an enemy, if we spawn the amount of enemies to spawn, we're going to pause it. We're not going to clear it, we're going to pause it. Then up here, what we'll say is simply um, on pause timer by handle. So we pause it down here when the amount of enemy spawned is the amount we wanted. And then we resume it here or on pause it when we've killed those enemies. Which again, We'll start going off every two seconds in our case, firing off this logic and repeating basically this loop. So you can see now we'll spawn or we'll start. We'll spawn in an enemy. It will get destroyed. A new enemy will spawn. I guess that doesn't exactly show you. Um, how the wave is working because you can't actually see because uh, the enemies are destroying themselves after a second so you can't actually ever see two at once so what i'll do is i'll say the enemies destroy themselves after five seconds now if we simulate this maybe this will be a better demonstration one enemy will spawn it gets killed a new enemy will spawn two enemies will spawn now it will wait for them to get destroyed. Since he died, it will start spawning again. You can see it is now spawning them again as the new wave has started. Every two seconds, it's spawning an enemy. And then once it reaches the amount of enemies to spawn, it's going to do a delay. After the delay, after that guy gets destroyed, you will see it starts spawning enemies again. 
And it's just this endless loop of spawn enemy. Once that the amount of enemies to spawn has been reached, it will wait for that enemies those enemies to die. Once those enemies dies, it will start spawning again. I hope this tutorial helps some of you guys out. If it did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what tutorials you want to see in the future. With that said, good luck with your games. Have a good rest of your day.